Hello and welcome to this uh, tutorial for WebEx uh, using my personal room. I'm going to show you guys some tips and tricks in order to run the best video conferencing meeting uh, while we are all working remotely. So like I said, I'm using my personal room through my WebEx license, I'm not using an Outlook add-in or um, Chrome or anything like that, using my personal room and going in through my desktop application. You can, of course, use a, um, a browser. We covered all of this stuff in What the Tech Just Happened, um, so be sure to tune in to that episode for the full version of Tips and Tricks. Um, but what we're going to be covering today is how to share content, how to mute people so it's not a disturbance, how to set entry and exit um, or turn off entry and exit tones, um, and how to make your meetings more collaborative by um, using your chat and your um, poll functionality. So we're going to go ahead and get started today, and I'm going to start by showing you how to share content. Um, actually, you know what, let me start with how you should get into a meeting before anybody else does and set up a couple of things. So first thing that you should do is go up to the participant window here in your desktop application. And you have a couple of options. You can, uh, this first one here, entry and exit tone. This is what you want to turn off so you don't have all of those annoying beeps. So go ahead and turn that off. And this way, when people come in 10 minutes late or leave 15 minutes early, you're not hearing the beep, 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 beep. Uh, second, uh, you won't see it here because I don't have anyone logged in, um, but you want to mute all if people have already come into your room or if you're lucky enough to be the first one there and no one is there yet, um, hit mute on entry. Having this checkbox next to mute on entry means that uh, as people come in, they will be automatically muted and should they need to come off mute, they can go ahead and do that themselves. Uh, so that covers muting, um, setting the entry and exit tone. This one I cannot emphasize enough to turn off, especially if you have a lot of people um, coming in. I was actually looking at my WebEx meetings and I the most I've hosted is 215 people. So you definitely want to make sure that uh, that's off because that can get really annoying for people joining. Uh, second of all, uh, you can share content and that is super engaging, but uh, there's also some pitfalls uh, to be aware of. So first of all, if you go to share, um, you have a couple of different options. You can share content, which if you click on that, it is going to give you a list of everything. So your different screens, what's on those screens, um, Google Chrome, for example, WebEx meeting app, my VIP access, um, any sort of applications that you have. But if you had PowerPoint running, you could, I think I do, you could go down here and share just a PowerPoint. And I highly recommend, unless you are showing someone how to do something on your screen um, that requires your whole screen, I definitely recommend sharing just an application. This will keep things um, from popping up like uh, meeting and reminders, uh, emails, uh, chats that maybe you don't want people to see, and it just guarantees that privacy as you have a lot going on on your screen at any given time. Um, you can also choose to um, share specific web browsers, so you can open up a new Internet Explorer window, um, stuff like that, or you can share an actual meeting window. Um, which will open up a mirror image of everything on your page. And to stop sharing, you just hit stop sharing. Super, super easy. Um, so that's how you can pick and choose what content to present. And so if you're presenting content and you have the dreaded, you know, go through a few slides and people say, oh, I just want to stop and uh, see if there's any questions, you have that dreaded, dreaded silence. So a great way to avoid the silence, a couple of things, using the chat window. So you have the option to chat everyone or you can pick individual people. So only those individuals see it. So I usually log on and say, good morning. Let me know if you have any audio or video trouble. We'll get started soon. So as 
the host of a meeting, I can't recommend it enough to always start out and be that first person that is introducing um, yourself, is starting the conversation. If you have links to share, um, you can go ahead and share a link and people can actually click on it and use it. So if you're referencing something that's out on the internet or you're linking to a video or a podcast or something like that, you can just put it in the chat window and you will find that if you as a host are using the chat and you're responding to things that are in the chat, um, more and more people will use it. So uh, it's a great way at the set of a meeting to say, um, we'll be taking questions throughout. Type your questions here. And it will just come through. And as people have a thought, they don't have to wait for the meeting like to break in order to have it. You can just have all of those questions come through and other people can see what's being asked at the same time that might trigger another question or another comment or something like that. And sometimes chats are just fun and people say funny things. Um, so definitely take advantage of your chat window. Um, the other feature that I use on um, a weekly call that I do and have been doing since February of 2019 is polling. And I actually don't see a lot of people use polling, so I'd love to see this used way more than it is today. And it's pretty easy. So you can get the shortcut down here. And if you're wondering how I got those panels down there so I could actually see them, if you go into panels, and manage panels, this is how you will see the order of things. So I've got polling first, chat second, my participants third, and then a multimedia viewer fourth. So you can customize if you don't want multimedia viewer, you can take it out and just put these here and you can lock this. Um, so that's how participants see it as well. So I click the poll and I have the option to create a brand new poll or bring in a poll, but it's really easy to create poll questions. So if you just do new, is this your first time attending this meeting? Yes, no. Uh, you can also do short answers, new. And then and then people can answer. Oh, actually, no. I think I just typed a whole nother question. <laughs> but so you just put the questions in there, super easy. And then you have some options. Um, you can have a timer. Uh, I actually just learned that if you, uh, whether you display a timer or not, it gives participants five minutes to answer. So you could do a sequence of questions um, based on your content, or you can use the max amount of minutes that they allow, which is 1,440. So, or just the time span of your meeting of 60 or 30 minutes. So when you go ahead and do that, you've got your timer, you're recording individual responses, you want to go ahead and open the poll. And this is where you can really start to see what kind of participation you're having. If you have, I only have a guest in here just to show it show up, um, but if you have 168 people here, you will see that 168 people have not yet started. You'll be able to see what percentage of them are in the middle of answering the poll um, poll, um, and how many have finished. So it will give you a really good um, quick uh, sort of temperature read on what kind of engagement you're having in the meeting and if people are actually participating. So I would definitely use the chat. I would definitely use the polling and start small. Just do one or two questions you know, in a meeting, see how you feel about it. Um, use the chat, but those are really the one, two, three, four, five things that I use to have a really good meeting on top of, of course, having a good microphone, a good camera, um, and just generally having good content. So uh, follow us for more tips and tricks as we go through. We're going to be covering other platforms throughout the next few weeks, um, and if you are a super user of any platform, uh, send us an email at uh, podcasts at connection.com and we'd love to chat with you more and maybe share your expertise uh, with our audience. 
Thanks so much. Bye, guys.